everyone, welcome to our next edition of the Zoo Crew EDU. Today we'll be talking about the America's avian rotation and thank you all for flying in to meet our feathery friends. All right, first up we're gonna meet our American keeping staff. We currently have a, two full-time avian keepers and that is myself and then of course another keeper, her name is Heaven. We work together to make sure our birds are very well taken care of. All right, now it's time for us to meet some of our birds. First up, we're gonna be talking about our scarlet macaws. Their names are Remy, Scooter, and Peso. These guys are five years old, although the majority of the time, they pretty much act like two-year-olds. Next in our aviary are the Amazons. Their names are Paul, Paco, and Beepo. These guys live to be about 50 years old and are known for having that vibrant and green coloration in their feathers. Next in our aviary is the military macaws. Their names are Doc and Bugsy. They get the name military from the colorations of their feathers that actually resemble military uniforms. They are also considered vulnerable in the wild due to deforestation. And then finally in our aviary, we have our blue and gold macaws named Bo and Bam Bam. They are considered one of the most well imitators of vocalizations but they are also known for having very loud ear piercing screams. All right, now it's talk, time to talk about our waterfowl, which we happily name them the water team because you can see them in our ponds going around the primate islands. First up, we're gonna be talking about our Sevastopol goose. Her name is Shrek. Now, I know you guys are probably wondering why do her feathers look like. That is normal for her to look that fluffy. It's actually a mutation that gives her feathers that curl on it. Next, we're going to be talking about our Chinese geese. Now, we have three of them. Their names are Tonks, China, and Arnold. These guys differ from the wild birds because they are much larger and they have a more developed knob on the very top of their bills. Now, of course, that knob on top of bills is prominent in both males and females. Now, we do have another type of Chinese goose. He is the white Chinese goose, and he is the boyfriend of Tonks. Now, next on our list, when we're talking about our water team, that's our Muscovy ducks. We only have males, and their names are Ferdinand, Leonardo, and Henry. Now, Muscovy ducks are very well known for having those bright red bumps on their face. And of course, you can also find those on both males and females. And then finally, we have one domestic duck. His name is Alexander. He is pure white and you can tell him apart because he has a nice white afro of feathers on top of his head. Next up, we're gonna talk about our final birds that are on display and that is our breeding pair of laughing kookaburras. Their names are Terry and Dude. Now they have a territorial call <laughs> that actually makes them sound like they're laughing, which is where they get their laughing name in their name, Laughing Kookaburras. Now these birds are only carnivorous birds on our avian rotation, so to feed them, we do give them pieces of small mammals. Now, of course, they do eat them whole out in the wild, but here we actually cut them up into pieces to make it easier for them to eat. And they are. All right, you guys, since we are done talking about introductions of all our birds that we have on display, we're now gonna talk about how we feed our birds. We have several different types of pellets that we actually use. We have one that's called a large bird pellet, which we actually give to our macaws and cockatoos. Now we do have another one that's for our smaller birds. Of course, it's named small bird pellet because what else would it be called? And those are for our cockatiels and conyards. We do have waterfowl pellets for our water team and cockatiel seeds that actually goes with our small bird pellets. Lastly, we have our Harrison pellets, which we give to our special needs birds to help with uh, weight and feather management. These birds will also use their tongues to manipulate the food that we give them so that they can move it around so that they can eat it comfortably on the perches. As you can see from the video here, you can see our friend Spike using his tongue to manipulate the seeds so that he is able to crack them. All right guys, now we're gonna talk about enrichment. Enrichment is a continuous battle for these birds because they are very well known. They are very well known for destroying anything and everything very quickly. 
And so when we're enriching the birds' lives, we have to have several options for them to play with. This can be considered through ropes, through different types of novel food so they can rip it up. Puzzle feeders, of course, are very important. And we give them all these things so that they can use it for natural behaviors. So of course, if we give them a coconut shell, they need to be able to scrape out the food like if they were to find a coconut in the wild. Of course, ropes is something very fun for them as well that they can preen just like if they were to preen their feathers. Now this also helps with birds, especially our cockatoos and parrots that are very, very smart to give them some mental stimulation. We also use the puzzle feeder so that they can use their minds on how to actually get their food out of that puzzle feeder. I'm open. And guys, now to talk about grooming and of course, in this case of birds, how they preen, which is very important for when it comes to us determining the quality of their beaks, their feet, and their feathers. Monthly, we do uh, assess the birds' beaks and feet to determine how they're doing. Now, birds naturally wear them down using perching, rocks, all the stuff we give them that actually helps them create that curve of the beak. And so because their beaks are continuously growing, if they do start to have some problems, we will get the Dremel, which will help us create that curve like I was talking about. Of course, you can see the curve of the beak on the picture with Cooper on there. He's our beautiful hawk-headed parrot. Now, when it comes to feet, we actually look at their nails and make sure they're not too long to where there is any irritation or any other issues. And so when that happens, we'll also just take their weights as well. That way we can make sure they all have very good weights. Now we do also, it's very important with feather quality in birds. When birds get stressed, they do have a tendency to pluck their feathers. For example, as you can see in this picture, this is an example of Nola, one of our African gray parrots. She used to be a pet and she does have a tendency to pluck her feathers. She was donated to us at the zoo as many of our other collection birds. She came to us with over preening issues from not getting proper attention that she needed and because she was stressed from the change in environment and she started to pluck her feathers even more. But since then with giving her more enrichment, some socialization and the proper diet, she has stopped plucking her feathers and the quality of her feathers have greatly improved. And then eat, of course. Now we're going to talk about proper perching. This helps us whenever we're working on the exhibits of the birds. Now, proper perching actually helps us with good foot care. We make sure we give the birds different types of wood as well as different sizes and shapes so that it helps us keep their nails trimmed. Um, we change perching out every few weeks because, as we discussed, birds are very destructive and they have a tendency to rip up their perching as well as tear it into tiny pieces the seed that is delicious and talk about our kookaburras again. Now, like I said before, they are an established breeding pair. They have had several babies over the past two years. And what's really interesting about the baby birds is when they decide they're ready to hatch, the baby birds will actually develop an egg tooth, which is on the very tip of their beak. They'll use that to crack open their egg whenever they're ready to come out. Now, over the next month, the parents will feed them and clean the nest. And during that time, the baby will actually start to grow his feathers. Once the feathers have come in, the baby will teach the baby bird how to fly. As the keepers, we have to monitor and make sure the parents and the young are doing well in this process. We will do several checks throughout the day as well as check on the baby and make sure he is doing well as well. Side. All right, you guys, we've come to almost the end, so just hang in there with me. Now, we do have several birds that are behind the scenes. And this is because we are still in development of our walk through aviary. We will be building a large multi-species aviary with lush plants that will help house our animals. And if any of you would like to donate to the, to the construction of the aviary, you can go to our website or our social media page to look for more information. We are excited about our new additions and are looking forward to have many of our other animals on display to the public soon. I want to thank you guys all again for coming and watching the Zoo Crew EDU AV America's Avian Rotation. Cool. Of course. Guys, to close this up, be sure to come in next week. We're going to be looking at some scaly friends, so make sure you slither in for next time. Of course, the cutest things ever.